we're going to be getting our curly hair tarantula out of the stupid little plastic box using this Tropical Factory UK glass enclosure and turning it into this naturalistic curly hair tarantula setup to replicate the curly hair tarantula's natural habitat. And this is how we do it. If you've seen any of our other build videos in the past, you'll know the very first thing we have to do with every single enclosure is to give it a good clean. This one's been sat around for a fair few months so it has gathered some dust. We're going to be using our soft dust pan and brush to clean all the debris out from the inside of the enclosure. Then we've got some reptile safe disinfectant. We're going to spray the whole inside of the enclosure and give it a good wipe down. After that's done, we're going to be wiping it down with isopropic alcohol just to make sure it's extremely clean on a microbiotic level. That way when we do secure any backgrounds to this enclosure, it's going to seal perfectly fine. The next step is moving on to the background build its actual self. Now this is where it's going to get quite challenging because it's not just a single piece of background. We're going to be building in a tree stump log area. We're going to be building up a water dish. We've got a lot to build up. To do this, we're going to need a couple of items. We've got the inch thick polystyrene. In America, you'd call it a styrofoam. We've got quite a bit of this for a future builds that we are planning as well. So if you are new around here and you want to see those builds, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Bear in mind, there is quite a bit. We have to measure the back of the enclosure and then cut out a piece of polystyrene to the correct size of the background. We then do exactly the same process on one of the sides. That's the side where the tree is actually going to be. That's measure the side panel, the complete side panel. Mark it out on the polystyrene and cut it out again. Then we have to grab both the background piece and the side panel that we have already cut out fit them into the enclosure and just make sure they fit really snugly. If you need to make any adjustments, now's the time to do it. We then start planning out where the actual tree is going to be. Now this is going to be tree roots, just like they naturally have in the wild, where the curly hair tarantula would actually live. After that, we can get the background out of the enclosure, grab our blowtorch and gently start mounting the actual polystyrene. Not the part where the tree is going to be, but the rest of it, just to add a desired effect for a background. On the side panel, we decided to cut away the part that wasn't the tree roots. We then got the blowtorch and decided to make a nice smooth edge on that whole side. It allows for natural light to come in and adds to the aesthetic appeal of the design. It was at this point we decided we didn't really like the background piece of the background. We liked the tree root part, but not the background piece. So we decided to cut that out and do what we did on the side panel. We kept this in the video solely to show you that it is okay to make mistakes. Then we get the back panel pieces turn them over, cover them in silicon on the backs and adhere them into the enclosure. We like to apply a rather large amount of silicon to make sure it stays there and it's gonna stay there forever. For this next bit, we're gonna start building up the hide area of this enclosure. That's the tree root section. We've got one piece that we've cut out and this is gonna mark off the top of the hide, which is the bottom of the tree roots. We're gonna cut it into the desired shape and we're gonna shape it again using the blowtorch and glue it in place, remembering this marks the top of the hide. And now we start working on sculpting the legs of the actual tree roots themselves. You have to keep in mind, some of these tree roots are gonna be buried underneath substrate. To do this, we're gonna cut off chunks of polystyrene that are a little bit bigger than what we actually need them, cut them into a rough sort of shape, and then shape them with the actual blowtorch, creating the tree root effect. Once we do have the effect, once we've tried it a few times in place and it does fit, we're then going to silicon and glue them into place to keep them there nice and secure. Once that's finished, you'll end up with something that resembles a tree root. We have to keep in mind the tree root will be embedded into the substrate layer, so you're not going to see the bottom parts. We then add silicon over the big joints just to one, help secure it, and two, add for a little bit of curvature instead of just a flat join. We then have to do this on the background piece. Once again, cutting the shapes down to size, shaping them with the blowtorch gluing them together and leaving them to cure for the acquired time. It's at this time, if you want to add a little bit of silicone just to help secure through the joints, now's your time to do it. Then we're gonna start adding in a middle root. We start building that in exactly the same way, trimming it down with a blowtorch, adhering a few bits together, making sure it fits into place. Then between two of the roots, we're gonna do a join at the top, just like you'd naturally see on a tree in the wild. The next day, once that's been left to cure overnight, it's time to start working on the tree trunk area of this build. To do this, it's done in the same way as the tree roots. We cut the polystyrene into shape, we shape them with the blowtorch, we put them into place and glue them into place. Once again, leaving them to cure overnight. 
once it's all in place, you can start adding silicone into all the joints just to help add for a little bit of shape to all the sharp edges, all the blunt edges, and help join up the roots to the tree trunk. This isn't massively important because the next step will also be doing exactly the same, but once it's cured for 24 hours, you'll end up with something that looks like this. It's now time to move on to the next stage, which is the plaster. Before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name's Richard, this channel's called Northern Exotics. We deal with all things reptile related, whether it be specific species care, breed your own life food, reptile life hacks, enclosure build videos, just like you're seeing right now. If there is any new scientific or technologically advanced information that comes out that's gonna benefit keeping reptiles, we're normally the first ones to bring it straight to you guys. If that is something you're interested in, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that subscribe button. And if this video is helping you out, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that thumbs up button. Let's get on to the plaster. The plaster we use is external use only plaster. It's plaster that you can use on the outside of your house on cracks and stuff like that. It's heavily durable and it works absolutely perfect for creating that toughened surface on the outside of the polystyrene. You mix it up two parts plaster to one part water and give it a really good mix. You don't want to make it lumpy. I like to do the first coat in a runny sort of consistency just so it can seep into all of the cracks within the actual background. We also like to add in a little bit of base colour acrylic paint into the mix. That serves as two purposes, you'll be able to see exactly where it is on the actual background piece. And number two, it gives you a good base colour to match from. Grab a paintbrush and slowly mix it around and spread it all over the entire background. Every little nook and cranny, try and get inside the hide if you can, get absolutely everywhere. This can be quite time consuming, it can take an awful while. Don't worry about getting it on the glass. When it's dry, you can take a razor scraper and scrape it all off. Just keep piling it on until the entire background is covered. You can then go back and do a second coat with a slightly thicker coat and just keep building it up until you get your desired effect. We then take a really thick mix of the plaster so that we can start moulding some extra shapes into the enclosure. We're going to start building up the roots where they meet the tree trunk. Be warned, this part can get quite messy. You are likely to get dirty hands. After every single coat, allow it to cure for the acquired time. You'll end up with something that looks like this. Then it's time to start painting the enclosure. Now it already has a base coat, so we're not gonna be putting too much paint onto this. This is where some people normally get really scared, but there's nothing to be scared about, because if you do make a mistake, while it's in its wet form, you can just dab it with a paper towel and it all comes off. We've got burnt umber, sand, they're both acrylic paints, which are all non-toxic and when dry, water resistant. We mix the two colors together in various different ways, just so we get a different color palette throughout and just slowly start dabbing it on. There is a technique called dry brush effect. That's where you load your paintbrush up with paint and then rub it all out onto a paper towel. You're left with minute amount on the paintbrush, but then you can just brush it straight over the surface and it really does leave a really nice effect. You can use the darker colors in the same method to paint where the shadows would naturally be in the wild. We added some more greens and some more browns to the mix along with some white and really light highlights and this is what we ended up with. Fingers crossed our tarantula really likes this. Have you got a curly haired tarantula? What name have you given it? I'm really struggling to find a name for this one. Put your name suggestions in the comments down below. Then it's time to start cleaning the excess that has gone on the glass. To do this, we're gonna use a razor scraper. We're also gonna clean the glass while we're at this point. We clean it with a reptile safe disinfectant. But now it's time to move over to the substrate layers and plant in this enclosure. For substrate, we're using our very own tropical mix of substrate. If you'd like to know more about this substrate, it's the one we use for all of our tropical enclosures. I'll leave a card in the top corner right now. However, this isn't a tropical species, so we are gonna be adding some sand into the mix, just to allow for extra drainage, and it'll help compact the substrate down nice and firm, just like this tarantula would naturally have in Nicaragua in the wild. We lay the substrate out throughout the enclosure, inside the hide, over this back corner is where we're gonna start planting the plants. We've just got an arid species of grass that we're gonna use in the back corner, just to add for that extra bit of naturalism inside this enclosure. We've got a few bits of moss that we're gonna be lying around on top of the sculpted background. Because here at Northern Exotics, we like to go extremely naturalistic to the species that is in the enclosure. The more naturalistic we can make it, even down to a lighting level, the more natural behaviors will come out of the animal that is in there. We then add some extra decor into the substrate layers. Then we had a clean-up crew into the enclosure, that's tropical grey isopods and springtails. These help to eat all the waste off the tarantula, they eat some of the leaf litter, they then fertilise the plants to help with the plant growth, making this a fully bioactive enclosure. We leave it for a month to allow for a bacterial plume, make sure all the temperatures are correct, make sure the humidity is correct, and then we add the tarantula. Fingers crossed she enjoys this enclosure, thanks for tuning in. If you have enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the thumbs up button.